There's only 20 clubs in the English Premier League each season and it's pretty rare that one of them changes their badge. So it's big news when they do. And even if you're not a nerd for football and design like me, there's some real communication lessons in here. Let's go. Hello friends, my name is Matt Brunton. Welcome to the channel or welcome back. This channel is for the communicators and Norwich City last month announced that they are going to be changing their crest or their badge as we call it at the end of the season. Now this isn't just like any other corporate rebrand, this is quite big news because football fans have a real feeling about the badge that it somehow holds all the associations they have with their football club and they're really tied to it. And football fans, especially in, in the UK, I think, I think all around Europe, are very traditional. And it's really interesting to see the way they've announced this and what they have done with these moves to change the crest. Now, there's this uh, page on Norwich City's own site that I just want to go through. And they start talking about their history and tradition, Really try and get the fans on the side. And as they show the old crest, you can maybe see already for all the designers on this channel, some of the problems that they have with it. But they really try and bring the fans along. So here, what they're illustrating on this timeline as I'm scrolling through is when some other teams in the league last changed their badge. So as you can see, Norwich are way back in the early 1970s. And they're trying to make the point that almost everybody else has changed their badge more recently than that and perhaps it's time for us so they are aware that they can't just say hey here's the new badge there's going to be perhaps some resistance from the fans and they really need to take them on a journey to give them a rationale for why they are changing something that is loved by a lot of people so this is one uh, reason the timeline but then they also talk about the technical challenges now looking at this badge here the designers immediately will see there's a lot of technical challenges with the logo this looks hand-drawn this looks like something from a pre-digital era uh, that's later been uh, vectorized and there's a lot of issues but I find it really fascinating that on their main site, they've really tried to, to make this point and uh, develop it. And they do that quite well. As you scroll through, it highlights different parts of it. So the canary, it talks about here, the, the hand-drawn, um, there's inconsistent line weights, really important point. So the design studio have obviously helped them with this. It's um, someone who uh, handled this redesign. They seem to be doing every football team at the moment. I believe they did. Wolves and Tottenham and Aston Villa and they've kind of cornered the market on this. Um, and then it goes through with the lion. I mean, this in particular, I mean, our current illustration does not adequately resemble a lion. You don't say. I mean, look at the face of this lion. It's, it's bizarre. It looks like it's been cut out of a piece of paper or something. This is really poor. Um, and then they make the point that the ball is not centered and the whole thing is a bit off balanced. Uh, the, the shape of the shield's a bit ugly too. Um, because of poor contrast between yellow and green, they've had to do this black outline. Uh, it looks outdated. So what they've done with the new badge, and they talk about, again, the approach, the focus groups, 5,000 fans responding to the survey. They've really gone for it. Um, they've introduce this new crest and this new crest is basically a redraw it's not a whole rebrand it's not a big departure now i just want to pause for a minute and i actually worked on a, a personal project almost two years ago now called cresta icon where for every team in the premier league that season i i created an icon something really simple just each evening a spare time personal project to represent that team, saying, could we take these badges that often have, uh, you know, here we've got four elements and a shield and colours, could we bring that down and in black and white and in a very simple icon still represent that team? And this is the sort of canary that I uh, designed one evening for this. So I was definitely aware of some of those issues. And I also created this little mock-up, the idea that perhaps 
again centering the ball on the shield and introducing the castle by these turrets on the top of the shield shape rather than having to have a separate castle and I didn't feel a lion was really necessary in Norwich's uh, badge it's a very uh, generic thing I think for the UK and you, you see it you know on lots of different team badges and it's more associated with Aston Villa or, or Millwall Scottish football English football three lions so I would just take it away. But this was just my like couple of hours, you know, at one evening solution. I wasn't necessarily suggesting this should be the new crest. But it's interesting that a lot of the issues that I identified have come through here. They haven't been as bold. They've redrawn to try and bring the fans with them. And I find here there's nothing really to object to for a traditionalist. You have the same colours, the same layout, and they fix the technical challenges. We've got consistent line weights. We don't need the black outline now because there's a really good use of negative space to uh, represent uh, throughout this illustration. The ball's now centred. The lion is uh, much more like a heraldic lion that we would expect and they've kind of uh, redrawn it to fit. The amazing thing is that although this has been well received by the design community and I even saw some positive comments on LinkedIn, I went to have a look on Instagram and Twitter and people were losing their minds. The fans were apoplectic. How dare they change our badge? It's terrible. It looks like a child's drawn it and all the kind of standard comments that you get about uh, new logos that frustrate those of us who are identity designers. Now, how fans could think that this old lion was fantastic, but the new one was drawn by a child rather baffles me. But I think it's just sort of the standard lines that people uh, trip out. So if you're an identity designer or you do a prominent logo, you know, uh, don't look for praise amongst the general public because you're probably not going to find it. Even though they've really taken the time to explain their decisions and the process, that still wasn't enough for some people or perhaps they just didn't get this message out to enough fans. Now, they make the point here that the new crest will be used from June 2022 featuring for the first time on the kits shortly afterwards. And I think perhaps this is one of the problems. When you just show a logo, there's so much to object to. And as identity designer, I'm a big advocate of producing case studies that really show the work in context. It's hard for most people to understand uh, why a logo needs to be changed. So you need to build the case. They've done that with the backstory here, but perhaps not enough applications. Just mocking up a flag, a badge on the stadium and a scarf is not enough, really. They really could have done more. And then maybe fans would have been, oh, well, I like the kit or I like the new training wear. And they could have maybe brought them around and helped them see it in context and see why it needed to be done. One thing they did, which was smart, uh, this is on someone's uh, case study. I'll link to this down in the description, is they projected um, the new badge onto Norwich Castle as part of the launch. Uh, definitely always project your logos onto a local castle. Great tip for all you designers out there. And so I think this does help. But again, apart from that, there are a few applications here. It's the same thing. But it's been drawn well. It's definitely the safe option to the continuation of the tradition. I would like to see something a little bit braver. But I can understand with the backlash that they did get that perhaps this is far enough. So let me know what you thought about this redesign. I'll link, as I said, to uh, this project down in the comments so you can check it out for yourself and talk to you soon.